28-year-old Muhammad El Aboud, who enjoyed making TikToks of himself proudly, shows off his new home in this video. Interior looks. Interior. Fă frumusețe de băiat pe aici. Așa. Bucătărie cât casă. Asta cum se numește salonul sau cum se spune limba română, așa. Și adevărul e că nu e bani în buzunar. <laughs> From the glee in his face, you would never know. He had just murdered someone in order to become the new owner. This is a tale of greed taken to horrific extremes. Hello, my name is Holly. Welcome to the Murder She Shed, the place. We honor the dead right from my little she shed. Now smash that subscribe so you can join me usually two times weekly right here in my she shed. Now, what do you have to lose? I mean, you get to watch this southern girl in her... She shed out in the country, in the woods, and tell you stories, and it's free on top of that. So, what do you got to lose by pushing the subscribe? You should get right on that. All right, now that I've given my spiel, we can begin the story. 71-year-old Louise Kim from Potter's Bar, Hartsfordshire, England, was a trusting mother of two boys who had previously owned a catering business with her ex-husband before moving into rental housing. She currently owned two properties in North London, an expensive house in Barnett and a shop with three flats in Williston. The house in Barnett was a beautiful four-bedroom home located at 16 Gallants Farm Road and was the fifth most expensive house in that area. Louise was doing good for herself. She had worked hard and this allowed her to lead an extravagant lifestyle. Unfortunately, this would make her a target of two men that would eventually end her life because they wanted what she had. Louise had money, she had cars, she had property, and she had a life that both of these two men wanted without having to work hard to earn it. 28-year-old Kasu Aljundi was a kebab shop chef at a restaurant where Louise sometimes dined at. Kasu would flatter Louise as an older, lonely woman. She enjoyed the attention. This was not the first time that Kasu had used his charms on an older woman. Anna Wright had been flattered into giving her Audi and a Toyota RAV4 to Kasu, who said he would make payments to the older woman, but Anna never received a penny. Kasu was married and a father of three, who still lived in his parents' home. He would boast that he was a millionaire with a string of beautiful girlfriends, although nothing could have been further from the truth. He did have one beautiful girlfriend, though, who was a model. Her name was Maria. He met Maria through a friend, a 24-year-old homeless Romanian national named Mohammed Alaboud, who was the delivery driver at the restaurant where he worked. Maria and Mohammed had been friends before he met Kasu. They seem to have the love of making TikToks and comments. Said he killed 17 people just for looking at him. Ce crezi, mă, că mi-e frică de tine? <laughs> she would come visit Muhammad often, and this is how she would meet Kasu, who was married. Maria said Kasu fell in love with her and wanted to marry her although she insisted they were not romantically involved because he was married. Since when does that stop some women? I'm not insinuating, but I'm just saying. Yeah, some women don't care. Truth, truth, truth. I'm just putting truth out there. That's all I can say is truth. Weirdly, she can be seen in TikToks with her supposed friend Muhammad hitting her in the gluteus maximus. Yeah, just friends though. All of them just friends. Call me a call. Call me a call. 
Marie came to London to visit the two men about five times and was driven by Muhammad in the great Audi. The two had stolen from the first older woman he scammed, Anna. The car can often be seen in Muhammad's TikToks. After Louise started talking to Kasu at the restaurant, she became infatuated with the young man. For months, Kasu worked on gaining Louise's complete trust, and then he attempted to plunder her life savings and take ownership of her properties. He aimed to gain control of her finances by convincing her to sign a lasting power of attorney document. He was able to convince Louise that his girlfriend, who he claimed was the older woman, Anna, that he had scanned, was very wealthy and wanted to buy the properties off of Louise and would give her more cash than the properties were actually worth. Louise decided that she wanted to sell the property so she could give the money to her two sons. So Kasu tried to trick Anna into attending meetings with him and Louise. He had told Louise that Anna was backing him for millions of pounds and told Anna that she needed to attend meetings with him because he did not speak English well and needed help with documents. Anna refused because she had already been scammed once by this man. Kasu was able to obtain the keys to the property of the four-bedroom home. And Muhammad, who had been homeless, quickly moved in, making himself right at home. He even invited Maria to come stay with him at what he claimed was his new home. And of course, they made a TikTok together, dancing in the new house. People say I cannot. I get off to the thought of proving everyone wrong. I won't stop to the top, so you better back off again, boss. I'ma stay loud, stay proud. Never running out. Never... This TikTok was made only two weeks before the two men would murder Louise. Louise refused to conclude the deal until she could meet Anna. And so the two men set up a meeting at the home that Muhammad already lived in. They told Louise a lawyer would be there, so she drove to the property on July 26, 2021. And they actually have surveillance video of her driving on to the property. This would be the last time Louise would be seen alive. After entering the house, Muhammad snuck up behind her while she was sitting on the couch and strangled her with a hairdryer cord. The two men then bundled up her body in a duvet and dumped it into a rubbish bin, then covered it with garden waste. Kasu later arranged to be collected by some workers in a van, which he paid to take the rubbish bin himself and Muhammad to his family home in the hope the rubbish bin would be quickly collected by the trash service and they would end up in a landfill. They can be seen in a surveillance video along with the men they paid pushing the bin onto his parents' driveway. The men that had received the payment to deliver the bin had no idea there was a body inside. Muhammad moved Louise's BMW car from the driveway of the Barnett house and sold it via Facebook Met Marketplace to an unsuspecting buyer. He used that money to buy himself some new clothes. Afterwards, coming back to his new stolen home, putting on those clothes he had bought and made a TikTok gyrating in the driveway of his stolen home. I wake up every minute with the fever dreams. I push a mind to a limit where it needs to be. I work like I got vision I don't need to see. I'm picking mind over matter. I believe in me. I need to find more hours in the day to breathe. Need to find more power in the way I be. And when my mind turns out with the painful scenes, I need to scream out loud. And let me tell you, girls, it's not impressive. That, that's all I'm saying about that video. Jesus, I am not impressed. The next day, using Louise's phone, Kasay left messages to her family claiming she had gone to China for a vacation. Kasay, who had also taken Louise's bank card, went by his girlfriend Maria some expensive earrings. Muhammad ended up confessing to Maria that he had murdered Louise, and she later testified against the two men in court. Louise's black BMW was recovered by police on July 28th in Edgeware, just two days after her murder, because her family had reported not seeing Louise and the strange messages they had received from her phone. Her body was discovered on August 1st at Cassay's family home. Still had not been taken by the trash service. That is a super slow trash service, but lucky for Louise's family, it is slow. But 
wow, that's a lot of days not to take your trash. Because Sue can also be seen on a surveillance video peeking into the trash cans. I'm not sure if he was wondering if her body was still there or just warped. I'm not sure which on that. Officers found that the false messages from Louise's phone were sent using the Wi-Fi at the restaurant where Kasu worked. Kasu's DNA was identified on gloves found with the body and on one of the plastic bin bags she was wrapped in. Muhammad's was on the hairdryer and other gloves dumped with the body, while Louise's blood was on his jumper. So they left DNA and evidence of their crimes everywhere. Both men ended up with life in prison with a minimum of 35 years. Louise loved and cared for so many. Now her disabled eldest son has been left without a loving mother. Her youngest son stated that he deeply regretted that he was not able to do enough at the time to prevent his mother from falling for the lies of those wolves in cheap clothing. So sad. Poor Louise. She just thought she could trust people that could not be trusted. Well, guys, thank you for joining me at the Murder She Shed. I will leave you with some Simon bloopers. Y'all have a blessed week, and as always, be kind to others. You never know what they have been through. Thanks so much for all the support you give on my channel. I love y'all, and y'all are amazing. And continue to share my videos and put the word out that I'm here at the Murder She Shed. I love y'all. Bye. He knows that word bye. And it cracks me up because he knows the video is ended. So therefore, we're going to go do something. You know you'll want to. You know you'll want to join this southern girl. Why not? What, what do you got to lose, really? Like free videos, free stories, free accent. You have nothing to lose. Right from my she shed. Smash that. Here's that Simo coming to buggo. Although nothing could be further from the truth. This older woman he scammed Anna. That crow is pissed. The Audi, because Sue had stolen. Seriously. Is that a hawk or a crow? I'm not sure. But it almost sounds like a hawk. I think it's a hawk. Probably trying to get my ducks. Simon's laying out there by him, though. He won't let them. He loves his ducks. Simon does. He guards them and watches them. And about five times. And there, speaking of Simon. Speaking of the devil right there. There he is. I've been busy building my rabbit cage. Well, let's just say my rabbit cage keeps growing, so I had to put it outside because I built the house, and then I was like, oh, they need places to play. They need tunnels to go to, and my husband's getting worried because it keeps getting bigger and bigger. I'm like, I know. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop, but I just want to have places to exercise. He's like, just let them go out in your back. Garden, which is true, I can. I have a fenced-in wildflower garden that I can let them run around in, but I still want them to have a pen with... I don't like anything pinned up. It just bothers me. I don't like them pinned in these little pens, and so I just want them to have plenty of room to be. It's been from the country where my animals can just do whatever, so it bothers me, and I know it's all right because you city people do it, and you have to, but... As a country person, it bothers me. I like I want to have lots of room. So I'm adding on to my rabbit cage. And it's becoming from a hutch to a mansion. I'm going to take y'all out there and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about because I am making a complete mess.